we are live. We are live. What up, dudes? What's going on? What's going on? Good to see you guys. How you doing, Hobby? I'm great, man. I'm just trying to... to... There we go. I'm doing good, man. I can't complain. I'm doing good, man. Complain. Right on, right on. Where are you you at? In Mexico? I'm in Mexico right now, yeah. I'm in the desert. In Mexico right now, yeah. Yo, Jamie, nice, we're getting man. a little echo from the volume uh, out from on your phone right now. I got you. Is there a headset possibly or you're about to stop? Uh, we can pause you until you're able to get that set up and me and Javi can get kicked off. Yep. Cool, man. Well, we are finally doing this thing. And I thank you two for joining me. Really excited for this festival more than any other event I've got planned for the year. And I'm excited also to be doing this live stream because this is the most fun thing that I have found myself doing lately is this type of stuff. So thanks guys. Thank you. Super excited to be Thank here. you, man. Yeah, me too, man. I'm glad to have uh, Interverse involved with, uh, with the on-site uh, goings on this year too, man. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to be there running around doing your Talk photography that, thing, right, Jamie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Couldn't keep me away, man. Since, uh, since we started, basically, Jamie's been on board with us. So. Awesome. Yeah, man. Since the uh, legendary, was that 2015? The first big year in Oklahoma? Is that right? 2015, 2015 when we went all out. We got involved in 2014, but 2015 was, yeah, the, uh, the big one. The big, yeah. yeah. The big That's kahuna. I was at that one myself, guys, and that was life-changing <laughs> completely. I remember seeing you at that uh, Wicket, uh, the instigator said, I think it was one of those shows in that indoor space, that crazy indoor uh, stage. God. Yeah. Their event center over there. Yeah, that was madness in there, dude. Like, all those shows were so sweaty and crazy. <clears throat> And I think I was in there 25 minutes the whole the whole festival. I just we were running around, so I, I really didn't get to enjoy it. But it was a 40 cool square miles. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Dude, yeah. I remember sitting thinking, like, God, you could have 80,000 people at this venue. You know, it was. Uh, oh yeah, it was enough to Easily. have. Easily. Easily, yeah. I mean, it's a great spot, beautiful spot, you know. But Not as cool as Mulberry Mountain, though. I was about to say nothing. I mean, <laughs> the the reaction and the just the vibe from last year in Arkansas was, I mean, night and day. Honestly, I, I mean, for for us on the backside, you know, on the back end, it was awesome oh. to work there. I mean, it they know how share. to do it. They've done it before. They've been exactly. through the routine. They know what you know what the festival brings and what value it brings to the community and stuff i think exactly yeah not not in mulberry i mean the whole the whole community was like you know, right and in oklahoma was that was a big issue for us and uh just didn't exist last year so it was awesome the family That's is great. that the family of the arkansas festival people is ridiculous like i haven't necessarily lived in other parts of the world but I have been on both coasts and even in other countries for music festivals and there's awesome tribe everywhere, but this is a special region. There's something, something interesting here. I mean, I, I'll be honest. We were, I mean, I was blown away. You know, I mean, I never been to Arkansas uh, prior until we started working with Backwoods, and uh, totally, totally unexpected and, and in, a, in a good way. I mean, it's, it's awesome. I mean, like you said, the, the community, the vibe. I mean, it's, it's a great spot. I mean, I can't, can't ask for a better place to be. Well, you know, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, talking about a sacred, a sacred cow or whatever, but, uh, yeah. you know, it's interesting back yeah. kind of with the problems in Oklahoma and then getting to step in there, was it three or four years since, since the, the death of Wakarusa, the untimely death of Wakarusa, you know, it's kind of like, a, you know, to our community, it's kind of like somebody had to pick up this ball and this tradition and keep it going, you know, and I think this, this year at Backwoods, it's kind of like a full on spiritual renewal and connection with that old tradition because it's the same dates you know and it's like it's a i don't know i mean not trying to draw comparisons to wakarusa or tr nobody's trying to recreate wakarusa but uh right. for the community for our regional you know festival family it's definitely been a hole in the in the uh, season and to have something fill in that same time and space is really uh, it's beautiful to see the cycle 
come back around. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, just like we're stewards of something that's greater than all of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, uh, I feel grateful to have some part in it at all, you know, to, to help make it, you know, make it something cool or just I mean, to help happen at all. I think we all feel that way. You know, we, the festival has to be organized, but it's only, you know, it only happens with, with the, the attendees and everybody else who helps. Um, I mean, like, I mean, like I said, you can't ignore that Waka Rusa was there. Um, we're not, you know, we're totally different, but it's, uh, it's something I was missing and we're glad to be, be part of that to, to be able to, you know, bring everybody back together again. Awesome, guys. We just got Nicholas Tar, the art director, on the phone with us, too. Say what's up, Nick. What up, people? What up, buddy? Not a good surprise. Uh, what's up, Nick? <laughs> yeah. Uh, up, Nick? Jamie just hit me up right before we started this and was like, we ought to get Nicholas to join us because one of the things that sets backwards apart is the emphasis on art. There's like a nice heart of art at this festival and bigger this year than last year. And it's something I'm going to be doing some podcasting about with the workshop director, Aubrey, coming up. Yeah. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the art side. And, you know, then there'll, there'll be more to talk about with the workshop stuff in future broadcasts. But what kind of artists can we expect to see there, Nick? Um, I don't know how much detail Javi would like to divulge at this point, but I'm feeling really good about um, all of the installations we have lined up this year, um, especially compared to previous years at Backwoods. Um, you know, Mulberry is a beautiful venue, and uh, I can tell Backwoods is very concerned about the guest um, experience, and especially when it comes to visual art and um, what we're bringing in the world this year. Yes. Jamie, what, what say you about the, uh, the art direction as someone who goes around taking pictures of this stuff all over the place? Well, I, like, like Nick said, I don't know how much, you know, secrets that we want to divulge. I know a couple of things that are coming that I'm super excited about that I've seen at other, uh, you know, national level festivals that are really fun, uh, interactive, uh, uh, kind of unforgettable experiences. But, uh, man, you know, Nick is the art director from, you know the wakarusa day so he has this is like a uh kind of a full circle thing here going on with that too so um i'm super excited about it man i think that uh last year even though you know the backwoods first year on the mountain and the you know budget was tight and trying to like make sure the thing worked and didn't overextend and stuff but the art area the nirvana woodlands instantly became it was so interesting to see that area that used to be parceled off as VIP camping be utilized for uh, art installations and that vibe over there with the, the you know the the T dome and the um, just all the all the installs we had last year I'm super excited to see what's going to happen with like you know a, a experienced professional uh, art director kind of wrangling it all together you know it's uh, it's going to be awesome. I like this idea of the resurrection of Wakarusa a lot and how that it came about from seemingly unfortunate circumstances in that Backwoods needed to move from the old venue due to circumstances outside of their control. And then, of course, it blossoms into what is possibly what Backwoods was always meant to end up becoming, which is the the Mulberry Mountain Jam <laughs> that it is. I, I would say also that that place is special to me because... My first music festival experience there was Wakarusa 2013. And anybody that was at that one remembers that it was extra insane. There were like life threatening storms. And, Swamper. <laughs> yeah, Swamperusa. <laughs> but that's not going to happen at this back. At this back yeah, Just, all right, let's not talk that. about that. No. But, uh. <laughs> No, but we, we the had, festival we that shall not be named. No, man, that was my favorite festival of my life. So I just want to throw it out there that even if storms happen, it Dude, doesn't ruin same. anything. I mean, last year, I mean, obviously didn't compare to Swamp Rusa, but uh, we had our, our storm come through Saturday night and we all survived and uh, it worked out. And I think Space Jesus was on set when uh, when it really started coming down and oh, yeah. it didn't affect anybody. So yeah man we're outside that's part of why we're yeah. doing it is to be outside and sometimes it gets wet out there and that's okay <laughs> yeah right exactly. yeah i mean the, the only the is so strong. yeah speaking of you know with the art installations when a storm comes like that it, it affects the, the installation but i mean 
it is what it is when a storm comes through. So, but at, you know, we still focus on bringing the best art and uh, handle it when when the when the time comes, if it comes. Yeah, that's all part of the journey is yeah. learning how to be prepared for everything. And that's also part of what makes festivals more than just a party for those of us that kind of make it a lifestyle is becoming more prepared. It's almost like a survivalist mentality at some of these events. I mean, Backwoods isn't le like uh, a dangerous going out to the desert for two weeks like a Burning Man type thing. But it is something that you learn self-reliance through is by like just the simple act of checking your list of do I have everything I need to yeah. not make myself a pain in the ass to other people while I'm at this event. But what's cool about the Arkansas Festival community is that even those of us who come unprepared in some way or another are found are like found by others who came over prepared in that way. And the, the things all plug in and people help each other. And I always see that. And that's one of the, my favorite things about the community of festivals in general, but especially strong at this uh, in this region. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um... We always talk about it, you know, when we leave the festival, even if, uh, you know, if my wife or someone's uncomfortable, you know, because it's you're not prepared, but leaving the festival, you always leave with amazing the people reaction to anything. I mean, just the, uh, uh, how they help each other, lost and found was ridiculous. I mean, we get wallets full of cash. I mean, it's, there's no words for it. I mean, I, I can't believe that people well, the, do that. the lost and found is always one of my favorite areas of festivals. Yeah. If you people just rejoice and it'd be in pure joy mode watching right. somebody recover their lost items they lost and found is pretty magic i mean <laughs> even the people who are looking for their things when they come and ask for it and they don't find it they still you know still have the hope that's gonna show up eventually and like i mean it's really awesome to see i mean it's really cool and then there's always some kind of synchronicities that end up with that when someone is sometimes people find each other without even needing the lost and found like one time i was at an electric forest which you know how huge that festival is like ridiculous right. and i found a hat that had to have ha had three hundred dollars worth of pins on it i mean seriously it was to the brim and all up on the top and around the sides every inch of the hat was covered i was like oh my god this is somebody's entire life <laughs> and uh, i posted a picture <laughs> Or I posted that I was, I found a hat with a lot of pins in it without posting the picture in the Electric Forest group during the festival. And someone else that had looked in that group saw that I had made that post and saw that someone else had made a post about losing the hat. And that person connected us together. So it's like this, uh, this festy angel. And I was able to go find that guy during the event and give it to him. And then he gave me a sweet pin. He was like, pick anything off this hat. It's yours. I was like, yes. Nice. That's, yeah. Jamie, uh, we got someone jumping in our, our uh, chat here. I'm going to read this for you from Kim Schmutz. Backwoods will Schmutz. be our fest family's reunion this year, and I'm so stoked. Thank you for the comment. Uh, I'm also stoked. I hope to see you out there. Oh, the pile's coming in hot. Yeah, I feel like this year is going to be the year that, uh, like, the the – the younger EDM crowd and the older Wakarusa Jam crowd. I think this lineup's going to draw a lot more of the, the traditional Wakarusa family out. You know, like Kim, you know, Kim's old school, you know, Mulberry Mountain Festival family. And that's, I feel like there's a lot of interest from people that couldn't, uh, that couldn't get excited about the lineup last year. You know what I mean? Just having the a little bit more jam oriented, you know, it's going to be, a, it's going to be interesting to see. I wouldn't be surprised if double the amount of people wind up coming out. I like that. Yeah, balance. I want to touch on that. You know, we spend a lot of time really, really listening to what, what people are asking for and we put it out on you know, all the social medias as what people want. So hopefully we did the right choice this year and, um, you know, it's really trying to find a, a, a sweet spot for, for everybody to come and you know, be happy with the lineup and obviously once they're there, be happy with all the uh, extra activities we offer. Oh, we're getting more people joining us now. We're starting to, it's been breathing a while. We're starting. I had myself muted there, but the, uh, the, yeah, we cut off a bit. the stream's been uh, breathing long enough that we're starting to get some activity in the chat. I'll just remind people that tune in, give us some comments and questions. We'd like to hear what you're wondering about with the festival. And then in a little while, I'm going to have us watch the 2018 recap video, which I think will be pretty fun. It's about four minutes long and got some really great 
highlights from just what it feels like to be at that event. And yeah, it was fun for me to watch earlier and I'm excited to react to it with you guys. Um, Nick, we haven't heard from you for a minute. Uh, can you tell us what you love most about going to Mulberry Mountain? I mean, you've got to have stories galore. <clears throat> Uh, well, my first festival was at Harvest Fest on the mountain, you know, eight years ago when my wife was pregnant and I didn't really know about festival lifestyle. And I went to, you know, I didn't even know about bluegrass music. And I mean, I just fell in love with the lifestyle and the people that I met there in Arkansas. And as I've traveled and gone to other festivals and other events across the country, um, I've never met a, a group of people that have interacted and cared for each other in a way that uh, the people from Arkansas and central uh, Missouri, you know, take care of each other on the mountain. Uh, and that's what I'm excited about from an art perspective is seeing different people that have different <clears throat> skills and resources, bringing them to the table and finding ways to activate those people on different levels with each other. Um, that to me is what motivates me creatively um, about the whole project is, um, you know, being able to activate uh, different people with with their skills <clears throat> and uh, anyway so mulberry mountain specifically in the arkansas family is uh very close to me and i'm super excited to be putting this work in with uh javi and the team and uh, i feel really good about it awesome dude i'm so but with you if you were looking for stories I, yeah i do have a couple <laughs> <laughs> well feel free to share anything that is a, a fun story but i'll just toss in there that what you're talking about with inspiring people that show up and helping them tap into what latent skills they've got that's totally my experience as a individual going to festivals i was like a totally square dude <laughs> for years in my early 20s man uh, like there's no way i was even slightly expressing myself in any interesting or unique way whenever i started going to this particularly wakarusas were are what really blossomed me but then other festivals too i wouldn't have gone to the other festivals if it wasn't for wakarusa but i figured out that like all that cool shit that we see the uh the artists doing we can all do if we just put in the time we can do it in our own way and I, now here i am about to actually be hosting a a live podcast panel which will be at backwoods on sunday which is like yeah. something i probably would never have even imagined as possible back in 2013. I didn't even know I wanted to do a podcast at my first Wakarusa. I know that's not exactly backwoods, but on the on the bridge from going to Wakarusa to backwoods at the mountain um, in 2015 was my first backwoods experience, which was huge. And it was one of the first festivals that like really recaptured a lot of that magic and inspiration from my first festival. A lot of times I was just chasing the dragon, <laughs> trying to recreate that really perfect first time. and. I would say my experiences with Backwoods have been some of my my best out of having gone to dozens and dozens of these big events uh, since then. And yeah, I'm really stoked about this. And sto story time though, let's hear it. Uh, Jamie or, or Nick, what do, what do you got? <laughs> oh man, if I want to tell a story on myself, that's, that's not, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm just like with me and Nick stories. The last Wakarusa, I actually missed the whole last day of the last Wakarusa because we raged so hard the night before. Golf cart adventure, like legendary, dude. Like we're Cody <laughs> Beatbox Perkins, dude. We were on a mission to, to uh, introduce him. He wanted a beatbox for Nako. And uh, we wound up like we rolling. had the legendary red, red dog on the cart with us. Uh, dude, we yeah, yeah. Get... Colonel Red Dog of the Wood Patrol. And, uh, Oh my God! Yeah, that that was a that was a wild night, man. But I woke up at like 7 p.m. on Sunday night and went, like, "What the hell?" You know? And uh, yeah, God, it was yeah, it was an appropriate way to end Wakarusa. You know, <laughs> it was a it was a wild night, man. But he met uh, Cody Beatbox Perkins, the most talented beatboxer I've ever seen. We got there's a bit on my Facebook page if you're curious about. I, I would love to get him out to back for this year, actually, but. Uh, he met Nako. I'm standing here with, with the Red Dog himself and uh, recapping on that story was one of my favorite uh, moments at Walker. It's a long story short, after three or four hours of journeying, uh, may have been 12, I don't know, but we finally got Cody Beatbox on main stage 
right before knocking when the game was going to go on. We were like, pause, you guys have to see this. And uh, <clears throat> Cody did his thing for knocking on them. They were super impressed. And then we brought Cody, like, you know, up front, VIP, and he, his eyes were just like, I don't know. It was like make a wish. <laughs> <laughs> like make a wish foundation. And we just made his wish come true. I think mean, there there's tears. And that's what it's about. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah, it was a mission, dude. We were on a on a sacred mission that day. It's like this kid's dreams are gonna come true. Yeah, kid's a monster though, dude. He was playing with that that uh, megaphone. The Wook Patrol had a megaphone, and he was incorporating the sounds of the megaphone into his beats. I'm I'm looking on Facebook right now, trying to tag you guys in one of those. Hey, does that dubstep uh, beatbox with the jaw harp? And dude, he would hock a loogie, and it would all be part of the beat too. It was just, it was hilarious. Like he's like actually that. spit. Oh, like you're, you're saying that spitting out the loogie. Chance, I'm taking a minute right now. <laughs> okay, dude, we need to drop it in the comments just so that everyone that watches this later can see that. It's great. Isn't that the, the same I weekend? I just tagged you in the uh, comments of the of the video. Give give the boys some uh, some views, man. Uh, it's worth it, dude. That shit's crazy. Well, that's what's yeah, so yeah, awesome about cool. being out there is getting feeling like the magic in like oh i i i can do this i can uh i can beatbox or whatever i you wouldn't believe how many people are just like singing and making music out in the campgrounds at uh at backwoods slash wakarusas in the past and feeling like literally this vibe that hangs in the air at the entire place that we can all tune into to get in our flow state more easily it feels like just like a three-day flow state to be honest i agree i agree i love man i always have visualized festivals as like a place where at their best it's a place where everybody can come and do the thing that they love to do the most and it all kind of like if everybody just expresses their own like like hobbies and talents and passions it's just it, that's what makes the tapestry of the whole you know what i mean like everybody's in their flow i love like peak moments at festivals where you can look around it's like everybody here is like some of them are dancing in their flow state some of them are you know spinning fire in their flow state somebody's taking a you know photo over here or video it's like everybody's just like flourishing in their thing that they love you know um so yeah. what so what do we do to, to keep that going you know in the, in the real world <laughs> that's uh i think the big question man i'm glad yeah, you asked that question. you know the answer to that though too it's like uh you know taking that art and doing you go we all know the answer you know it's like uh expressing it outside finding a outlet and expressing it all the time you know working on all it the all time, the time yeah. you know like yeah, or maybe or maybe, or maybe the, what it makes it so special is it's not all the time you know but uh i don't know i mean it's, it's when you leave those festivals you know when we leave even working it i mean i've become more creative on even just another side the past couple of years and i think backwards and working on this be part of it you try to keep that going uh, tough. it's tough to do it you know when when you when you're alone or working and but um you know you just gotta Man, i think it's, it's hard to even remember i feel like it's hard like the the uh the default world like the uh the burning man people call it you know like the outside the festival world yeah. and the festival world can be at times especially for you know like when you're at different levels of kind of like um working a job you hate or working a job you love kind of like every, we're all on different pages of the journey you know and like <laughs> excuse me um i don't know man uh it's like being able to even remember the the lessons of the and the things that happen in the festival can be difficult sometimes because the default world is so different than that you know it's like um just taking that little magic and taking it home and remembering that that was real and like chance you remember like we had that conversation on the last time i was on here about uh the positive shadow like the uh uh, like how I think to me like one of my like dreams for people taking home from festivals if they see like if you see a musician just jamming the fuck out on whatever their instrument is or you know honeycomb beatboxing at the back of the stage of the globe yeah. for eight hours like that positive shadow thing of like man I admire the shit out of that person for doing that and like maybe there's something latent in me that I can do that too you know I go home and practice that or look up techniques or whatever and like you know, let it inspire you to do the things, you know, and like, uh, just be a contributing part. Um, you know, like, like changing people, like they come in as a spectator and hopefully they leave as a participant and an artist, you know, like, right. like they've seen like, holy shit, I could do that. I, 
you know, I want to eat the fire, you know, or whatever. Uh, just kind of like the activation, like Nick, I love that word Nick uses a lot, you know. Um, Nick, what do you think about activation? What's your definition of activation? Oh, man, being fully activated is where it's at. <clears throat> when you're just firing on all cylinders from a creative, creatively fueled, inspired, passion-driven um, perspective, like, there's nothing more uh, high than that. Like, I, I love not only activating myself, but, like, seeing other people, like, you know, like you are talking about, uh, activating them on, on their levels and showing them that they have the capacity to contribute um, things that maybe they don't even see in themselves, you know? Guys, this is like my favorite subject. I just want to say when Javi was like, how do we bring the festival feels out to the quote unquote real world or the default world? That question was the exact thing that led me to even create the podcast that we're on right now <laughs> because I would have these unbelievably heady convos with people I just met and it would be as if that we were already in sync having known each other for years or something and i was like i mean jamie you're one of those people that uh inspired me to to create this thing with the type of interactions we had out out there in the the festy world versus the i think that that's the real world and the the what we call the real world is the fake world what do you guys think <laughs> yeah this, this is the illusion this is this is the the marketing created world where nobody's satisfied with themselves i feel like that festival kind of tradition is like a return to that archaic revival type you know what i mean like we were yeah. doing cele like community yeah. gatherings and dances and celebrations way before we had um you know trademarks and brands you know what i'm saying like uh i feel like it's ancient ancient stuff that we're kind of tapping into when we have these big communal rituals you know yeah i mean i, I think it goes without saying uh how popular festivals are in general. I mean, people, it's an outlet for people, uh, which it shouldn't be an outlet. Like, like you're saying, it should be the way of life for people, but um, it shows that, you know, the default world causes a lot of people this urge to, to I mean, live, live something differently, which is probably more natural than what we're living now, you know? Yeah, the a artist that I love and podcaster who's been on the show in the past and he's very involved in the music festival and live art scenes he is a guy named michael garfield and he has this really oh, brilliant okay. article about how festivals themselves are kind of a symptom of the disassociation we have from our own selves like the fact that right. we have to have these sort of peak experiences that take so much to even build and put together and organize to even bring the people in that level of consciousness together is a is literally a, a symptom of the fact that we're disassociated in our normal lives and so this is kind of going to go to a little bit of a heavy place but i just wanted to talk about a big a big person in our festival community locally that we just lost named marcus phillips and one of the most beloved people out there he's also a festival organizer himself and we had a yeah he actually ran the secret stage at backwoods last year javi uh our friend that passed away this week right. I haven't even really talked about it, man. Uh, Cause I haven't talked to you lately, but yeah, the, the it's kind of like a Marcus had a big impact on on Backwoods last year, you know. Well, the reason Pretty I bad. bring him up is because when we were all together doing the celebration of life visitation last night, it just struck me it was really hard that why aren't we all together all the time? Why like why don't we just have like a village of these people working together and living together? Because then we wouldn't need to even do the quote unquote real world stuff. But even right. further than that, it gave me hope because if like the grid goes down, I, everything hits the fan, something into the world level happens, this group of people, we could all just like gather together at, at Mulberry Mountain or at the farm or at different venues where we all know each other and just uh, start a new little ecosystem there. <laughs> I feel like that we've already got the connections. It's just a matter of main, creating a way to... Uh, benefit off of these connections that we we have at festivals and that's what the entrepreneurial artist who is in these scenes is doing is like increasing the number of serendipitous connections potentially serendipitous connections they have with other human beings and that's like if there's any reason to want to come out to a festival even if you've never been to one there it is right there because if you go out and do something that is fun and that you love it you, that is really special the people you meet there are going to be people that you're going to vibe with 
a lot more easily than just like the random person you meet at a bar. I mean, there's not that exactly, there's not, it's not the same, you know, you're like following what you love is what leads you to the people that you, that you will love most, I guess, is the, uh, the lesson there. Oh, Jamie, you on mute, bro. I want to hear what you think. As I said, I love that. I love what you just said, man. I agree. Okay. So from the homie, Michael DeVito, he says, Javi, thanks for the Backwoods Festival and nice to meet you. When's the uh, secret set going to be this year? Where and when? <laughs> <laughs> secret set. I <laughs> um, no, appreciate it. Thank you so much. But uh, it's a secret set. So uh, you have to be there to <laughs> That's figure out. Nice try, DeVito. Okay. Well, um, we kind of already touched on this, but Michael also wanted to know how the art plans are coming along and ask Nick about that. Oh, you guys want art? Yeah. Hobby, <laughs> um, I think it's safe to say we're about 100% secured on all of our installations for the wood room. Yeah. Um, currently working on our visual artist lineup. Still very good about that. Um, had a lot of people reaching out. <clears throat> so it's kind of tough to filter through those. Uh, sure, uh, <laughs> Um, I, I think there's going to be lots of art, not just visual art, but like next level um, art installations, very immersive. Uh, that's something that we've been trying to work on is creating an immersive environment that's not just, you know, um, things to look at, but things to interact with and experience. Because um, I think that's more important, you know, as people, more and more festivals are going on and more and more events are going up. I think it's important to find people who you know activate creatively from a heart space who do it with a, a passion driven intention to create an experience for somebody not just you know have an activation that's like a, a cycling piece of art you know right that's yeah, I think... what I was earlier about finding people with different skills and maybe even you know combining them together to create uh, a more elaborate piece that maybe they you know they wouldn't have done on their own, you know, it'd be like, hey, you have this 40%, he has this 60%, let's put you guys together, and what do you think of that? And it kind of turns into a collaborative environment. And Ch Chance, you're going to talk on, with Aubrey about this more, but I think the as far as the workshops and the visual art, a, a, maybe a theme without realizing it was how to bring the festival, you know, how to keep these things you learn at the festival and keep it going throughout the year to, you know, to, to learn from them and, and, and uh, you know, keep them with you all year. And I think you know, with Nick's help on, on a lot of suggestions and a lot of art that we got, um, very interactive. And it's not just, you know, you look at it and maybe you might see it at another festival. Uh, it's really going to be backwoods, you know, installations and, uh, and interactive, you know, moments that, you know, you'll remember that, you know, well into the year. Um, I think that was a big part of what, what we did. That's so exciting to me, man. And actually, this just gives me the inspiration. I already had plenty of ideas, but this gives me like a serious inspiration as far as like a topic or starting point for the live panel podcast. And Jamie just dropped out of the call. He'll probably join us again in a minute, but he's going to be joining me there. And I'll also be looking to just kind of see who I can pick up for the, the chat, who maybe some other graphic artists or performers or workshop presenters. I kind of want to leave it open-ended and make it sort of like a community Q&A group podcast thing where we do brainstorm that exact idea of how to how to keep our how to keep this feeling of lo love really, love for life and enthusiasm for life that being at the festivals brings us. Because one thing that's really obvious to me that I've learned especially in the, in the last few years is what you care about is what what happens, what gets done. So like the more love and enthusiasm you can bring to your life, which you would do by making sure that you're doing things that are, you know, in line with what your soul wants, the more effective you're going to be at those things. And it's exciting. And I really, really love the opportunity that you guys are giving us both to come to the festival that you're organizing and giving Interverse to help promote it and have a, a presence there because it's definitely like helping me fulfill a personal dream that I will continue to pursue forever. And it's just exciting to be doing this, man. So 
thanks a lot for that. No, thank you. I mean, that's the festival's made up with with people like you and Nick and Jamie. If not, it's not gonna happen. So, really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, I think this would be a good time to uh, go watch that uh, recap video for a couple minutes, sure. and then uh, we can kind of bounce our way around to the end, see if Jamie comes back or not. I know he was uh, driving, so he might not be able to rejoin us. And <laughs> I thank him for even jumping in on that because he's shuttling back and forth between Springfield and Harrison due to that um, the uh, visitation for our friend that I just told you guys about. So, yeah, yeah he's, uh, despite all that, positive as ever and bringing us all kinds of cool things to think about and uh joining us for this live stream which is super awesome but yeah i'll switch us over to this video we can kind of react to it and talk over it of course uh i just wanted to watch it again because it gets me pretty stoked on uh, what's what's to come Cool. I think we got it going. This is just such a beautiful place. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's... Yeah, I was amazed when I went there. I mean, I couldn't believe where we're at. It was awesome. <laughs> the old Backwoods venue was cool, but this is just... It feels so much more like out in nature and isolated from the world, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, dude, the, that Globe Theater was just off the hook. Yeah, they'll they'll be they'll be there again this year, obviously, and uh, they're they're helping us do a lot more. So it sounds like uh, maybe we'll be experiencing more things of that immersive nature, according to what Nick was saying too. So my imagination's absolutely. going wild. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, actually, hey, Javi, I don't know if you're watching the stream, so I guess you wouldn't be able to see the video, but we are playing it. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah to... okay. I mean, I'm, I believe you're playing it. So. <laughs> yeah, you could pull it up yeah. on Facebook if you wanted, but you'd be seeing it a little bit lagging behind, like 20 seconds. Yeah. I'll just right. tell you what we're seeing. <laughs> I, I, I almost have it memorized. I watch it all the time, too. So. We just showed the golden flowers and the dude in the dog costume. and Yeah. Oh man, there's just so much art. Bubbles flying around. <laughs> that gives me a question actually. Do we is there uh what kind of stuff is is there going to be for kids like parents that bring some kids to this? I mean, like like I always say, I mean, the whole festival as a whole during the day, I think it's a great place, you know, for kids and uh, we we don't have a particularly, you know, we have a specific area for kids and whatnot, but I mean, it's you know up to discretion of the parents, really. But during the day, I feel it's a super family-friendly place. I mean, you get to see a bunch of art, colors, like any kid or adult could be, you know, simulated by it. But uh, you know, at night, obviously, you want to keep the kids close. It gets dark. Um, but I mean, you know, we leave it up to the discretion of the parents, really. Well, yeah, that's you know, cool. I, yeah. I have seen some festivals that have set up like what would basically be workshops for kids. So fun stuff exactly. for kids to do. That would be kind of cool to possibly yeah. incorporate. Well, we think that a lot, but as far as, you know, we don't, you know, we don't have a lot of kids at the festival per se. You know, there, there's some, but I don't think it's a, uh, you know, it's really, you know, we don't, we, I don't know if it'll make too much sense for us to, to have a workshop for kids at this moment, you know, as we grow, hopefully we, yeah, that would just you know, be something a, that if the community was like asking for a lot, then exactly. you would you'd listen to. But if it it is kind of a uh, a grown up party, you could say, but not that right. kids aren't welcome there, or safe there, but that you know, I guess it's more like the mid level size festivals where you'd see um, a lot of families and, and dogs and stuff coming. But yeah, I mean, you can imagine anything else. You know, for for us, anything we need to add is you know, it's always going to be an expense. We want to make sure that this thing keeps going. So we want to make sure we, we touch where we need to fix and, and make sure that's what's people asking for. And then we can, you know, keep moving as, as we keep growing. But, uh, you know, we always need to be careful what we're spending and what we're doing, to, to, you know, until we're, we're at a certain point. That totally makes sense, man. And totally uh, smart to make sure that mistakes of certain past events are not 
uh, repeated, not that they were backwards mistakes, but you know, uh, as far as I know, there's been many festivals that fell by the wayside of poorly planned finances. <laughs> so it's good to know you guys Absolutely. have got um, a lot of experience with throwing this event back in Oklahoma. And I'm sure you've seen all kinds of things as far as uh, trials and errors and um, and solving solutions and stuff to uh, to almost everything. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's never almost never to everything, but uh, I mean, we've learned a lot for sure. And uh, uh, I think it's starting to show. Let me check the uh, see if we still have Nick. You still there? I guess I can just ask. Yep. Oh, cool, man. You're still here. I, for some reason, thought I lost you, too. But it's because I changed the way the video was showing on the stream. Well, man, you got anything to to, to throw in as we've been talking about various backwards-related things? I think we can kind of <clears throat> wind down our stream. I'm also going to check the chat and see if anyone's got anything else for us to uh, say say to us or ask ask us about. No, just on that last topic you were uh, discussing, I, I think year to year, even day to day progression within a festival, you know, three day fest, I think from a production perspective, you kind of learn things, you know, night one is like, all right, test, you know, what, what did we learn? How can we adapt this for tomorrow night and tomorrow night and like, you know, tweak things and make it better. And, you know, so it's like, it's not like just plug and play, you know, you put it in, it's like walk away from it. I mean, it takes constant maintenance and attention and, um, organization and involvement from all parties to make sure that everything's activating you know on the level it should be so i, I guess i was just thinking about that you know day to day at a festival and so how that evolves year to year and uh, i guess just kind of everything in life that that level of evolution and intentional progression um is definitely something that um creates magical experiences when you're activating it from a you know passion driven yeah we had uh in the chat james wallace in the chat wanted to know if uh poi and hula hoops are allowed at the shows because he's first timer at the mountain so a big answer is definitely and if it's fire <laughs> then there are designated areas and training courses am i right about that well so all the you know they're not allowed to bring any fire poi or whatnot that's all done with Okay, but but uh, LEDs and all that kind of stuff is totally cool, basically everywhere. Absolutely. What do you guys think about the the state of the art flow masters that we see at Backwoods, and especially now that we're at Mulberry Mountain? I mean, for for Jamie, it's uh, awesome photo opportunities, but and but also, I mean, just. I mean, it's, and they're all pros. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's awesome. I mean, I don't know, you know, what else to say then. It's just too awesome for words. You just have to see it. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I mean, once you see it happening, it's crazy. I mean, you literally awesome. can, I, I've literally had my jaw dropped by random hula hoopers or glovers coming out of literally out of the woodworks to, uh, give me light shows and that's part of the fun for sure. I that's part of kind of what we talked talked about at the beginning is like people getting inspired to bring their own form of art or become artists and the flow arts are a big gateway a gateway drug to art <laughs> for many. But uh let, let's uh let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. It's been a blast and thank you for the audience participation that we got and looking forward to doing a little bit more of this backwards promo over the next couple months and hopefully seeing a lot of you guys there uh nick you got anything to leave us with before we go no man i'm excited i just i know a lot of art planning you know we kind of keep um behind the curtains until we roll it out to the fest so I, I'm, I'm pretty eager to share all that but uh i'll let avi you know disclose that at their discretion but uh i'm feeling really stoked about it all the energy is good and uh, i'm excited to see you guys i appreciate you inviting me on the call today oh man i'm glad jamie thought of that and that's that's my plan kind of going forward when we do more of these is i would love to get more awesome cornerstone people of the community to join us and talk with us so we'll do more of these uh preview streams and it'll be cool <laughs> i'm sure that we We'll see a lot of our audience members out on the mountain. Thank you for your comments also, James Wallace. And I appreciate uh, 
your time, Javi and Nick. And Javi, got anything to leave the people with before we sign off? Yeah, I mean, uh, like Nick mentioned, we'll be we'll be announcing all the our installations that we have come in, and like we did the workshops, and we'll do little uh, highlights on all the all the uh, workshop teachers and and the artists. So that'll be coming in the next couple of months. And uh, nothing. I mean, I feel extremely grateful for everybody and who comes out and, and for you chance and for Nick and for Jamie. And uh, I think, I mean, we say it every time, but I think this is going to be our best year yet. And uh, uh, excited to get out there. I mean, Will and I and the crew will be out there in about a month. So uh, I hope to get there. All right. And uh, in case you didn't see it in the video, the main lineup is including Rez, Umphreys McGee, Zed's Dead, G Jones, Lettuce, Space Jesus, Two Sets, Aqueous, Bleep Bloop, Boogie T, Caspa, Iodo, Eprom, the infamous String Dusters, Keller Williams, Keller Williams, Grateful Grass, Two Sets of Minnesota, The Motet, Mystic Grizzly, Peekaboo, Pigeons Playing Ping Pong, man, and so much more. Uh, <laughs> and a sunrise set from yonder, the yonder is on Thursday in the pre-party, Yonder String Cheese. Uh... Oh man, uh, there's yeah, around, so. and then lots of yeah. good, more local, regional acts too, like uh, Cadella and Deep Sequence and Flintwick. And every time I look at this lineup, there's more than I just said, so go check it out, guys. But every time I look at this lineup, I just get another wave of stoked <laughs> hit me. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right, well, let's get on out of here, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time. See you on the mountain. Thank you.